To bring peace to Colombia, Pastrana's government will have to achieve what no Colombian government ever has, to provide security and economic opportunity for Colombia's poor. You need the security, and you have to do that, but you cannot do that alone. You need the economic development. I mean economic development is small marketplaces. It's the person who open, opens up that small restaurant or that small fruit stand or that uh, building to haul uh, something in the back of a truck. It's, it's the security to be able to take what you can do as, as an individual and derive some economic well-being for that. Uh, but that security does not exist for anybody in Colombia today. The Colombian government has identified the nation's enemies as corruption, poverty, and fear. Yet the United States continues to focus almost exclusively on drugs and leftist guerrillas. In either case, these enemies cannot be defeated by military force alone. First of all, if we're going to provide aid, it should be two-part aid. One, one fourth of the aid should be military aid, three quarters of it should be economic aid. Uh, these things cannot just be solved by giving Colombia more helicopters and more uh, military support. That may be necessary, but is part of a bigger plan than what is being discussed here in Washington. Without effective programs to promote human rights, the rule of law, and economic development, the Colombian government could miss a golden opportunity to build public support for its peace plan and its fight against the drug trade. There are a lot of decent Colombians uh, that want to fight the drug scourge within their own country because they've seen how it's corrupted their own judicial processes, their own uh, political processes, uh, their own business processes, and they're repelled uh, over the idea that uh, drugs has corrupted their uh, elements of their society because they're Colombians first and foremost are decent people. The guerrillas' public image has suffered due to their increased brutality and involvement in the drug trade. And the Colombian people are simply tired of war. On October 24, 1999, 13 million Colombians, about one-third of the country's population, demonstrated to show their opposition to war. The time is ripe for the Colombian government to move aggressively for peace. You have a president who's committed to negotiations and who does, who has specifically stated that he does not want a military solution. So what I want to know is, what is it that you want to uh, achieve through fighting. First, you have to unite Colombia by negotiations. Once you do that, you can start to talk about how to interdict uh, narcotics. The American and Colombian governments and the Colombian people all share the goal of advancing the peace process. But doing so by building up Colombia's armed forces is a risky proposition. The guerrillas could respond by building up their own forces, escalating the violence rather than ending it. Bringing more military power to bear on the crisis without supporting peaceful programs calculated to rebuild Colombia's economy will not help the country's millions of war victims rebuild their lives. Nosotros queremos que los honorables senadores de la República de los Estados Unidos eh, convenzan al presidente eh, de los Estados Unidos a que la plata que están pidiendo para arma lo, lo inviertan en obras sociales de educación, de salud para todos los colombianos.
For more information or to purchase a video cassette or transcript, contact America's Defense Monitor at 1779 Massachusetts Avenue Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20036, or call 1 800 CDI 3334. You can also contact us on the internet at www.cdi.org.